how would you like to go from solo agent to 300 transactions a year? Holy cow. It sounds crazy, but it is actually possible. I'm here live with Coach Kelly Revore of Club Wealth. Kelly is one of Club Wealth's uh, top tier coaches. Man, let me tell you, this, this woman knows what she's doing. She literally went from solo agent to just under 300 transactions a year in just under four years. And uh, in a very difficult market too. I mean, it's a very low price point market, which means she has to run her business way more efficiently than most people would in order to have the same or even remotely the same kind of net income out of it. Uh, and take this a step further, not only does she have to run more efficiently, but she's also in a very small market. So recruiting is a lot different for her, right? So it's not, it's not like she's in Seattle or LA or some big market where she's got all these different people to recruit from. And so she's going to talk to us about how did she grow her team? How did she grow her production? How does she have a freaking life? Uh, you know, she's a single mom working in, you know, you would think she's got to work 24 seven. She's not, but you would think that that would be the case in order to, to do as well as she has. Um, so we're going to talk to uh, Coach Kelly about all this stuff and more, and she's even going to share with us. Uh, she has a, uh, a document that she's going to share with us here a little bit later that is helping her with her recruiting process. So first and foremost, Coach Kelly, I love you. Can I just tell you that? I, I really you. do. Like you are one of my favorite people on this planet, and I'm not just saying that. I mean, you truly, truly are. Uh, can you just share with us really quick before we get started, just, uh, just share with us your club wealth experience. So, you know, how long have you been with club wealth? What attracted you to it? Why are you with club wealth? Why are you still with club wealth? Why, you know, just what's your club wealth experience been like? And then let's dive into, uh, all these details about how you grew so fast. Okay. So thank you for that huge introduction. Now I feel like I, I'm going to knock myself off the pedestal here real soon, guys. So anyways, to answer your question, I love you too. Um, I started Club Wealth in 2016 and as a single mother, I was running ragged, working way, way too much and needed something different. And I was so afraid to even like go on to Facebook and ask for real estate coaches. So I went on to Facebook and I searched this little search function over in the side that said coaches and um, your name came up multiple, multiple, multiple times. And this was in May of 2016. So we set up that our 55 minute free strategy session. We actually had it with Ron back then. So that was, you know, quite some time ago. Cause I don't think he does strategy sessions anymore and signed up immediately for tier one, um, as a brand new agent. I can't say a brand new agent. I'd been an agent at that point for three years, but uh, brand new client for club. Well, so signed up as tier one. Uh, moved to tier two rather quickly. Uh, and the only reason that we signed up for tier one was just because we wanted to really get our bases down and, and kind of understand this whole club wealth thing. My philosophy is I will try anything for six months. And if I'm going to spend the kind of money like we were on coaching, we wanted to make sure we were going all in. And we went all in and we attended, that was in May of 2016. So we attended our first BSM uh, in November of 2016. And by that time we were hooked hook, line and sinker, man, you throw some amazing conferences and we were yeah. dedicated, dedicated club wealth members ever since um, moved to tier two. We were in tier three for a while. I was coached by the amazing Brian Curtis for a long time. Uh, three years. I like to laugh and say that he was my longest relationship I've had in quite some time. Um, <laughs> and then moved up to tier four and then tier five rather quickly, all of within the same year. That was last year. So, um, you know, momentum was high. We had the right people in the right seats on the bus and, and we're very fortunate. And as long as you love on your people, you can, you can accomplish pretty much anything as long as you have the right people on your team. So um, <clears throat> that's where we've been. We're, we're still, and I keep saying we, because it's, it's all of us, you know, our, our team is, is a big, we We're a big family and we're, we're still in club wealth because I have met some amazing people within club wealth. I spend a lot of time and people like to laugh at me because I'm on Marco Polo all the time. Um, <laughs> I spend a lot of time on Marco Polo with club wealth people or on the phone with them. Of course we do our coaching calls and all of that too, but I've developed up such amazing relationships over the years and you know we're getting ready to go to Maui next week and some of the I just 
yeah, this is our third trip together, Michael to Maui. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it's it's those bonding experiences of all of the, the trips that we're able to take, the conferences that we're able to attend. So it's not just always being on Zoom. I mean, we really get to know these people and they, I talk to some people within Club Wealth more than I talk to people, you know, 10 feet away from me, to be honest. So those relationships have meant everything to me. You know, and they're why I am here. I, I was I was thinking, you know, as you were saying that, I was thinking about how those re, those relationships transcend time and, and circumstance also, right? I mean, some of these people become lifelong friends, lifelong relationships, um, and you just never know who you're going to click with and how it's going to help and, and wh who's going to share commonality with you and 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 who's going to really provide you with that that nugget that's going to help whatever part of your life could be your business could be your personal life could be you know whatever uh, but it's interesting how you know being in the right environment and being open to those relationships really matters uh, you know you've got to be you've got to be open to meeting those people you've got to be humble enough to be transparent and vulnerable uh, with people and allow people to come into your life and and share and 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 leave their fingerprints on it if you will uh, yeah yeah. and learn from them. I don't like to be the smartest person in the room. I don't. Well, I never have that problem. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter what room I'm in, I'm never the smartest person in the room. So that's an easy one for me. But uh, Well, let's talk really quick about, uh, and first of all, by the way, Jason Lash is watching. It's good to see you, Jason. Hi, Jason. Uh, thanks for being on, brother. We love you. And uh, by the way, there's a guy that should be going to Maui with us, but uh, apparently he likes it cold. And so he decided to stay in Michigan. Uh, for I have tried so hard to get him to come. That is, I think his kids' uh, schedules, his kids' sports schedules yeah. will not allow him to come. But man, yeah. I've been on him for a while now. Darn those good There's parents. still a chance, Jason. I know, right? Just, dude, sell the kids. Just <laughs> find, find somebody else. I'm just, I'm, I never said that. Just kidding. I, you didn't hear me say that. All right. So let's let's rock and roll this. I, I want to really, I want to dive right in. I want to make this short and succinct so that people get a ton of value in a short amount of time. Before I forget, though, I need to, I need to shout out to our sponsors, Wise Hire. Uh, and they're uh, at clubwealth.com forward slash wise hire, W-I-Z-E-H-I-R-E. Uh, we use the Matan. Uh, Kelly, I'm not sure if you're using that or not, but we're, we're loving wise hire. We get, uh, we do about 35 to 75 applicate, uh, actually interviews per week. Uh, the majority of which come through wise hire and, uh, they've been very successful for us. So, uh, that said, let's, let's dive right in. So let, let me ask you this. So First and foremost, you're a big believer, correct me if I'm wrong, in building a team or being on a team. And I always, I always say this with the caveat, that you either need to be building a team or you need to be on a team. The days of being a successful solo agent are quickly coming to an end. What are your thoughts on that? And, and tell us kind of your journey on that. Oh, absolutely. Um, I am a full believer of being on a team or leading a team. You've got to do one or the other. Real estate, you know, you don't go to a doctor's office and check in and the doctor doesn't check you in. And then the same doctor that takes your blood pressure and your temperature and the same doctor that does your exam. You know, there's so many specials, uh, special aspects of real estate. You can't be a marketer and an accounting person and um, a real estate agent and a salesperson and a buyer's agent and a listing agent. It is so difficult anymore because the expectations I feel of the clients, even back from when I started seven years ago, Gosh, it's been almost eight years. Um, I'm sorry, that just hit me. It's been almost eight years. Um, the expectations of our clients has just gotten more and more and more. They they want you to have an immediate reaction to things. They want you to know exactly everything that there is to know about everything. And it's, it is very, very difficult. So you've really, being on a team, it cuts so much of that learning curve off. It really mm -hmm. does. And whether you choose to grow a team or be on a team, the, the curve of learning and the curve of success is shortened just because, again, you know, you're surrounded by people that are doing the same things and have the same dreams and desires that you do. Um, the motivation is high when your motivation is high. And that's why I, I we hit uh, tier four and tier five so quickly because our motivation was just astounding. And we just chose not to sit back and ride with it. We went harder and harder and harder. So what would you say to the person that says, well, you know, I don't want to be on a team because then I have to give up half my commission. Yeah. So <laughs> That's always crazy to me. Um, you're not really giving up half of your commission in that aspect. The way that I look at it is 
if I could get you to, be, I don't even know what the average age, what does the average age include? Uh, I think the average age, it makes about $18,000 a year. Uh, but so, well, okay. I don't know what that is in terms of closing. Let's say eight to 10 closes. Put it this way. If you're making over, and I can't remember the exact number, it's somewhere around $46,000 a year. You're in the top 10% of all real estate agents in the country. And if you're making six figures, you're in the top one half of 1% of all agents in the country. Wow. Yeah. So, I, you know, I, okay, let's say the average agent, if they could sell eight to 10 houses a year, but on a team, you can sell eight to 10 houses a quarter. Mm -hmm. You know, what would you rather do? Sure. If, if you look at it as I'm giving up half of my commission, and then we can talk about that because I, I have a different outlook on that. Um, but if, if I could teach you how to sell eight to 10 houses in a quarter, you know, you're going to make four times as much money. I just, it is crazy to me why people choose not to. The success rate, I think, in real estate is like the 2% after two years or maybe 3% after two years. It's not very high. And, you know, when the way that I look at it with being a team leader is I, I make, uh, we're dream makers. Team leaders are dream makers. People get into real estate because they have the dream of, of having their own, uh, running their own schedule or or showing homes because they love showing homes. People get up and on Sundays and just go to tour open houses. That's their dream. Their dream is to be realtors. And and if you can find somebody that can help make that dream come true for you, that's the way that I view that. Uh, for a team leader, it's very, very, very expensive to be a team leader. Mm -hmm. And we throw all the risk up front. So yeah, let's say the average agent on your team costs uh, $1,500 to $2,000 per agent per month. And we're just asking to be reimbursed for some of that. So you're not giving up half of your commission. What you're doing is actually paying back a part for what your team leader has already invested into you. And you're making money on the side, on top of that. Um, and you're putting food on the table for your family. So, you know, it's, it's re reframing the mind on that because it's not giving up at all. You're actually making two, three, four times as much money um, being on a team than if you weren't at all. Yeah, I completely agree. You know, it's interesting. You know, Jason said uh, in the comments there, it looks like he's thinking that it's 3.7 units per year. Um, wow. for, and I've heard, you know, it depends on if you're talking local or, or national averages, but I've heard about 4.5 transactions per year. But here's here's the other thing, too. There's some real danger involved in, you know, I've only got 4.5 transactions a year happening. If the market drops by 20%, you're in a world of hurt. All of a sudden, you know, 20% 20, 20 of your income, actually 25% of your income at that point went away. And, uh, you know, to your point, the number of success or the success rate in real estate is that 87%, just over 87% of all agents fail in the first two years. 87% failure rate. That's, that's insane. That's like a 13% uh, stick rate in two years. And now I would say, and I don't have the statistics for teams, but I would say that that number is vastly different on teams. Um, you know, I know both of my kids, you know, like they're, you know, Austin, for example, he's, he's on a team now, um, you know, for that very reason, right? Because you know, you, when you start off, you really need that edge of, you know, somebody else is helping with the marketing, somebody else is helping you with all the, the systems, tools, technologies, lead support, personnel, everything you need to be successful, the environment, the accountability, all of the stuff, the education, the training, the everything you need to be successful is, is provided by great, great teams. And, uh, and it's a very low cost to get at that because frankly, if you went and paid for all that stuff yourself, you're going to spend more than 50% of your first, oh, absolutely. especially if you're doing less than 10 transactions a year, you're going to spend more than that just to buy the technology that you need and the leads that you need. Uh, because you Absolutely. don't get the leverage of the team. You know, a team can go out, as, you know, they can buy that team platform for the CRM, for example, and adding another agent is a lot less expensive than going out and buying that platform again. Um, so the whole system is really... It really is in the way that I view it too, when it comes to, because I mean, I'll be honest and very, very transparent with everybody that's watching right now is there's been many, many times over the years that I have thought, oh my God, what am I doing? I just want to blow the whole thing up and go back to being a solo agent because it is difficult to be a team leader. Um, but I have a responsibility. This is how I view what I do every day. Um, I have a responsibility to real estate in general. You know, a lot of times we have such a negative perception, real estate agents, a lot of people have a negative perception of who we are and what we do. They think that we're just out the, the general public, a lot of them. 
uh, just think that we're out to catch a quick buck or whatever. And I have a responsibility to my local board of realtors to make sure that we are professional and we have high ethics and things like that. So that's uh, how we train our team. You want to be professional at all times, have good ethics at all times and have a great reputation because everybody on my team ultimately is on the Revor team and it's my reputation that's on the line. So, you know, flat out it's my reputation that's on the line. If they screw up, I screw up, right? It's, it's 100% on me. Um, so I have the reputation or I have, uh, we have the responsibility not only to my local board, to the state of Missouri, but to NAR and all the real estate agents to make sure that I am helping agents to become more professional, to, to help switch that mentality. And I know all the agents on my team aren't going to be on my team forever, but if I could help them make money at the beginning, train them the proper way to be really amazing real estate agents, and then they go out on their own, I have done everything that I've set out to do. Um, and that is not why I started a team in the first place, but that is over the years of it evolving, it's become so much more than just me because I've seen realtors that have left the team and that have done amazing things and just in general have been good people. Well, and here's the reality. The reality is not everybody leaves the team, right? The, right. A good number of them stay on the team and, and you continue to, to build and deepen that relationship and help each other succeed. It's very symbiotic. Uh, and, you know, again, to your point, I think it's I think it's a, a a difficult thing for a lot of agents to understand that look, going it alone sounds great at times, but you know, Kelly, in your in your case, you know, here you've got a big team built up. If you were to go back to doing it alone, your per transaction expenses would actually go up. The bigger your team gets, the lower the per transaction expenses are. And the, a lot of the business, like right now, you know, as a team leader, you probably get some fairly easy transactions comparatively, right? But that's because you're getting all this stuff that's kind of the low hanging fruit on the team versus if you were out on your own, it's you don't have all of that lead generation happening, all the momentum happening that's creating that easy, you know, lower hanging stuff for you currently. Um, and so there's pros and cons. Now, I think that you also need to be, you know, you have been very real about this. Team leaders lose money occasionally. Uh, you're going to have a month or two and sometimes even three where you lose money. And that's a tough pill to swallow, especially when you're out selling houses, right? The whole, you know, if you're still in production then you're out and you're putting transactions together and all of a sudden you've lost money that month and you're thinking to yourself, why am I doing this? Why am I, why, you know, why am, am I going out? And not only do I have to sell three, four, five houses a month, but then my team's got to sell all these houses every month. In addition to that, and I'm still losing money. What's going on? What, you know, at, at what point do I start making money? So talk to us about that. Yeah, that was definitely some of some of my most difficult times. The, the first two years of uh, building the team was definitely the most difficult because of that right there, because I felt like I was working harder um, than pretty much anybody else on my team. I felt like I was I was working harder than them. I was I felt like I was working to support them is what I felt like because I was closing more transactions than they were. And yet all of the money that I was making was going towards their legion because I take none of the legion for my team. So it does not, the only thing I work is sphere and referrals and that is it. I don't do any of any leads that we get. They go, they are all dispersed out to the team. And that's how it's always been since we started because I didn't want anybody feeling like I was cherry picking anything. So um, that is how it's always been. So I felt like, oh my gosh, I'm going out here. Not only am I selling more than you, but I'm also having to train you. And I'm also having to pay for my admin and my support systems. And I'm also having to pay for you to have leads and you get to sit here and on your daily headles tell me that you made five phone calls yesterday you know it was just oh it was so exhausting and the frustration and um when they wouldn't be here for call nights or they wouldn't be here for client appreciation events because they had something come up and i'm like ah <laughs> and so it's it's just weeding those people out and again putting the right people on the right seat in the bus so talk to us about that so how did you get past that how did you grow beyond that, you know, I'm supporting the whole team. And if I stop producing, then the team's going to fail. Oh yeah. The team will fail. Um, <laughs> I blamed it on Brian Curtis, um, actually, which he didn't do anything, but I had to have a come to Jesus meeting with my team and I had to blame it on my coach. And I said, Hey, uh, my coach just did an audit of our books. And if we don't start producing more, I am literally bleeding dry and we're not going to be around. I don't even know if we'll be able to last three months. 
that's what I said. Um, and I said, if you guys want to be here, we have to act like we want to be here. Um, and we started with the daily huddles, which Ron had been on me forever about the daily huddles. And if you guys are team leaders and you're not doing a daily huddle, you're missing out on a massive opportunity. And not only that, recently there was a, this was just yesterday, I think on Facebook, there was a, a thing on who who runs your daily huddles. Uh, Linda runs our daily huddles. That's my mother and my business partner. Yep. We don't have our admin run them because our culture is huge. And if you start having your admin or your squad leaders run your daily huddles, you're missing out on a uh, big culture. Um, and, you know, we could, I could literally go off on a whole nother uh, leg of a conversation about that. But you should be running your daily huddles. Once we started holding people more accountable, we started having 90 days. If you don't have a contract in 90 days, then I'm so sorry, but this isn't going to work out for either one of us. Um, uh, and then having people that were being successful and others that were like, oh my gosh, I can do this too. Once we started having really successful people on our team, and it took, it took some turkeys to find our eagles. Once we started having some super successful people on the team, others realized that they could do it too. And the excuses just kind of went away. Yeah. And once the excuses went away, the right people went away. So you're saying the daily, and I'm, as you know, a huge believer in the daily huddles. Uh, now, let's let's be very clear you're saying one you or your partner if you have one but not not an agent not somebody you delegate it to not an admin team member you no, and or your partner need to run the daily huddles and, and then here's the big next question does it have to be daily can't i just do it monday wednesday friday no it has to be daily we the only day we don't do a daily huddle on monday because that's our team meeting day so that's the only reason we don't do it because we're going to get together that day anyways. But besides that, we have a daily huddle, not on the weekends, but sure. Monday through Friday, you're doing yep. a daily huddle five days a week. That's huge. Okay. Uh, and and I, I think that's really important to note. Okay. So now let's talk about creating culture on your team. So right, let's, let me back up. Let's start with building the team. Like, how did you build the team? How did you recruit agents? How did you get them on your team? And then we'll go into how do we get the right culture on the team? So in our board, we do, like you had said earlier, we have a very small board of realtors. We have 2,500 licensed agents right around there. I mean, you know, plus or minus a couple hundred. Um, but the year before last, I don't know the stats for 2020, but in 2019, 897 sold one house or more. And that was it. Wow. You know, you can have all kinds of licensed agents doesn't mean that they're producing. Um, so I have a very small pool of people to choose from. I am very fortunate. We're the largest um, team. We're the largest team in our brokerage company here locally. So when my broker is interviewing people, if they mention a team and he thinks they'd be a good fit for our team, he definitely introduces them to us. We, I pay bonuses to my team leader or my team members if they recruit people onto our team. Um, How much? Talk to us about that. We do $250 for their first four transactions. So a total of a uh, thousand bucks. Yes. And now just so everybody knows my average price point here is, I think we're at 165,000. My team, our average price point is at 185. So it's not much. But that makes you the, you know, the queen of real estate, right? Isn't <laughs> yeah. that it makes me more realistic because we're not all from bombing like, you know, Seattle, Washington, like you yeah, are. San Diego <laughs> or, you know, some other place where every commission's 20 grand, right? I know. So I'm just speaking to the other 80% of the people that have yeah. price ranges like me. <laughs> and I think that's really important to, to, to highlight because, I mean, the reality is it is different. You know, it's, it's more difficult to run profitably in a market where you've got a $180,000 price point versus a, a you know, $500,000 price point. I mean, every, every commission matters to you. Every dollar in every commission matters to you. Whereas, you know, if I'm, if I'm making 10, $20,000 on a transaction, it's, you know, a lot of those agents are, they're quick to give up, you know, thousand dollars here, $5,000 there or whatever to kind of, you know, shoehorn a deal in you start doing that. You're going backwards. Oh yeah, we yeah. are. Then we're, then we're no longer profitable and I'm going to want to blow it up again. Right. <laughs> well, I mean, here's the reality. The reality is you're not doing yourself or anybody else any favors by going bankrupt, right? For you, to, for, for your team to be successful, you need to be successful. And frankly, for you, your clients want you to be, I mean, I should say the right clients want you to be. Well, let's, let's talk about on, on the building the team part. How are you recruiting? What are you, what are you doing to get agents on your team? 
Um, indeed, all the time. Um, I am involved in our local board of realtors because we are in a mid, you know, in the Midwest. We're here in Springfield, Missouri, and relationships matter a ton here. So I am involved in our local board of realtors, and I, I, I stopped. I'll be honest. I stopped that. I was heavily involved in 16, 17, 18, and by 19 and 20 was when our team and our momentum was skyrocketing. And I really took a pause on all of that uh, within our local board of realtors. And it's um, not the best decision that I've made. So I'm jumping back into it. And I told myself, I love brand new agents. And so I said to myself, what's gonna get me in front of brand new agents? Cause I'm no longer YPN. I'm no longer the Y of the YPN committee. Um, so I had to go to something else. And so You're like the, the OPN <laughs> committee, right? <laughs> yeah, the OPN, the old people <laughs> network. <laughs> Instead of the Young People Network. Um, so I am involved in the education committee because that's going to put me in front of a lot of brand new agents and I'm going to be able to start building those relationships again. Um, we do a ton of social media advertising on our team events. We have four or five team events every single year. We have our client events. We do a lot of video to make people just excited about wanting to be on our team. And um, my, like I said earlier, my broker, he really helps us recruit. And that was not easy at the beginning. He, they didn't. Um, the brokerage company that I was with kind of had, or am with, I mean, I've been with them this whole time, but um, they're kind of a negative perception on building a team. And it was I, probably more of a threat than anything. And I that said, that's pretty, fine. If, huh? That was before. previously. Yes. Yeah, so when we first started in 2016, when teams started to become a thing, but weren't really a thing. And people always feel threatened by things that they don't know or understand. Mm -hmm. um, and now they see the value in it because I think our, I think our team is like, 30% of all the income that our brokerage company made last year. Really? So yeah, it was huge. So now they're, they love us now mm -hmm. um, and help us recruit. Uh, so that's what we do. We don't use wise hire, but the only reason why is because I have a very small um, price point and wise hire does a lot of indeed advertising, which I can do f at just, just as well. Um, there are tons of amazing companies out there that will help you recruit. And I know Club Wealth endorses quite a few of them. I don't spend money on that either. I do my own calling. I do my own recruiting because again, going back to being a profitable business. Well, and again, yeah, you, to your point, it's a lot more difficult at a lower price point. You know, it's, it's kind of like when somebody's newer in the business, right? If they're, if they're brand new in the business, they have more time than money. And when you're running on thinner margins, there's, you're going to need to do more things for yourself rather than just hiring a third party. You don't have the luxury of just writing a check for everything you just want to write a check for. Well, in some of those companies, I think they call 20 people a day and I'm like, goodness, you'll get done in less than a month calling all everybody that's available in my board. Cause I have such yeah. a small board. I have such a small pool of people. It yeah. seems like, um, I think it was Misty Bruton said she had like 20,000 people out in Texas and her board of realtors or something crazy. And I'm like, yeah, drop a zero and yeah, you can right? even possibly drop another zero. And <laughs> I love that you're focusing on new agents and that's been a big push for us. Uh, I quite, one of the things that we're doing a lot now using Club Wealth University uh, as the tool to do that, you know, for, is not only are we doing, and, and I say we, I'm saying, you know, Lee Garland, Jason Lash, Jason Cadwell, I mean, these, you know, huge, huge producers, you know, doing five, 600 transactions a year. Uh, Tim Ray are, are now building out their onboarding and their, rec and, and not just onboarding, but the, when they, they're, 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 well, let's back up. They're building these processes inside Club Wealth University so that they can automate a lot of that process. But then what they're doing is they're also doing this with people that are pre-licensed. So they're, they're, they're creating pre-licensed material and pre-licensed content now, not to teach people how to get their license, right? So basically the pitch is, hey, look, you know, when, when, when it comes to getting your license and staying out of jail, the, the, you know, you're going to go to this school to teach you that. But when it comes to how do I make money as a real estate agent, we're going to do that for you. And we're going to get you in our you know, pre-licensed agent accelerator program. And anyway, they're crushing with that. I'm curious, have you already adopted something like that? Is that on your radar? Where are you at with that? Um, I mean, it's, it's huge. And the nice thing for these guys is, you know, using Club Wealth University, they're able to do it A, for free. B, they're also able to collaborate. They're able to share that content with each other so they can borrow each other's modules if, they're, if they want to let each other do that. Um, so they don't have to create all the videos and all the questions and all the content. So, anyway, so speak yeah, and Jason Lash created this great oh. PPC video and I, he's just yeah. the master at all that stuff. So, and shared it. And that's again, going back to how amazing Club Wealth is, uh, you know, all the, so many people can help you. 
cut the curve <laughs> and do a lot of that stuff for you. So yeah, we have we have a great onboarding system. Um, I we don't I and this is a weakness on my end and I know that I don't if they are not already licensed I do send them the document actually that I that I sent in um, for our our uh, that I'm going to share today we do send that to people if they want to be licensed I don't take a lot of time heavily calling those people if they because most people don't know what it's like to be a real estate agent and they don't realize what is involved in that um, so I don't spend a lot of time on unlicensed people because I need to spend more time on those that are licensed to get them into my team well, and so, by the way, for that, if you guys want to get that free download from Kelly, uh, from Coach Kelly, you go to clubwealth.com forward slash grow your business, clubwealth.com forward slash grow your business. And tell us what that form is, Coach Kelly. So I get a lot of people all the time that see me on social media, see my team on social media and want to know what it's like to be a real estate agent. So I send them over that document and I actually, what I do in the, in the doc documents way prettier that they're going to see that you guys are going to see whenever you go to that link. Um, but I pretty much copy and I paste that and I send it in an email and then I do some follow up phone calls and I talk to them about it. What I realized when I very first started growing a team was if they at all reached out to me, I probably I sat down with them for coffee um, and then talked to them about what it was like to be a real estate agent. Most people think that it's, you know, you get paid hourly. They don't realize it's commission only and kind of had to, I kind of had to weed through some things. I spent way too much time drinking, way too much coffee. Um, helping people understand what it was like to be a real estate agent. So I had to learn how to do things a little bit more efficiently. But that document has saved me so much time over the years, not having to sit on the phone with people, not having to sit down for coffee with people. That just gave, it gives a really great uh, general overview on how amazing it is to be a real estate agent and also the cost of being a real estate agent. Mm -hmm. So it's, that's probably one of my most valuable tools in terms of efficiency. Okay, so let's talk about this. So are you doing the group interview then? Yes, we do group yeah, okay. interviews. So, so you run into So generally speaking, what we're seeing is working very well. And what we do inter internally in Club Wealth is we take all applicants that are not licensed yet. We run them to a group interview. At that group interview, that's where you would share the form with them. You would walk them through all the stuff you just described. And then from there, they have to self-select and, and you, you, you don't create a huge barrier of entry, but you, 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 you want to make sure that they're serious. If they, and then when they self-select, then you can put them through your pre-licensed uh, agent accelerator program, which now kind of indoctrinates them into your team. They actually become a part of your team. They can put their sphere of influence into your CRM and all that stuff. They can start calling their, CR, their sphere of influence to invite them to your client event. They just can't talk real estate with people yet. They just can't, they can't do anything that requires a real estate license yet. Uh, but they can certainly tee up appointments for, let's say you've got an agent on your team uh, that, you know, could go out with them. Let's say they've got a brother, sister, cousin, whatever wants to buy a house. Great. Let's take, you know, Susie sells a lot on the team with us. We'll go out. Susie will sell them a house. And when they get their license, they can then get the referral fee. Uh, but they got to get their license to get that. Yep. Uh, and so, then I don't pay for them to get their license either. And I know I some people either. within Club Wealth have, but um, uh, I I've, I've found if there's no skin in the game, they have no desire to do anything. So we don't pay for them to be licensed. Um, now, if they're if they are licensed and they are somewhat interested in joining our team, I have because our team culture is amazing. We invite them to our every single person that seems interested. I invite them to our Monday, our Monday morning, um, our Monday team meetings. Um, and then if they want to jump on a daily huddle, they can jump on a daily huddle as well. But those usually if I can get them to a team meeting, they're hooked because my team is amazing. I, I can I just say I love your advice that you don't pay for them to get their license. And can I take hey, Coach Kelly, if, if there's somebody in Club Wolf listening to this that is currently paying for people to get their license, don't do it like that's a no, no. Like, why would you do that? Uh, I agree with you, Coach Hill. They got to have skin in the game. All right, let's let's move to because we've only got about six minutes left, and I want to touch these last couple of bullet points. Uh, so don't forget, if you guys want that download, go to clubwealth.com forward slash grow your business, and I'll get you Kelly's download. Uh, but talk to us about creating culture and and the not just the importance of it, but logistically, how are you creating the culture on your team? So it's not something that you can just go and like do your little checkpoints to make sure that you're getting all these check things done. You, it's it's really something that's created over time. <clears throat> um, and it's something that as soon as you find a toxic person or a cancerous person, you got to get rid of them quick because if you don't, everything that you just spent the last four years building can be gone in less than four months. And you're going to kind of wonder what on earth just happened. So 
um, slow to hire, quick to fire, right? When we first started building a team, we wanted anybody, anybody with their license and a breath was able to join our team. And now we have been blessed and able to be so much more selective. We They've got to be the right culture fit for us. What that means for us is they've got to be fun. They've got to be positive. When I start with my agent interviews, um, if they tell me all the things that their other brokerage did wrong, and I ask the right questions. I ask questions that might allude to them. So tell me, how do you like being in real estate? Tell me about your current brokerage. Um, how are things over there? And if they bash their current broker, they bash their current brokerage, they say they didn't do this, they didn't do that, they're not the right fit for my team because all they're doing right now is trying to find reasons why they're failing and they're not looking inward on that. Um, we do a ton of team building events. I mean, a ton of team building events and our meetings are mandatory. Our money meetings are mandatory as mandatory as they can be because they're not W2 employees, but they don't get leads for the week if they don't get them um, or if they're not at our Monday meetings. So team building events has been huge for us. Um, we just had an award ceremony in, in January where spouses were invited. So we're going to go build some houses at Habitat for Humanity. We have done, like if there's a, one of our team, um, one of our team members uh, owned a yoga studio. So we all went to yoga uh, once a week with her and one of them owns a restaurant. So anytime that we have anything to do with food, we ask him to cater it and everybody loves his restaurant and, you know, we'll meet there sometimes. So we just make sure that we do a lot of really fun things together. Um, we include spouses anytime that we can. If there's, you know, one of our agents just recently, her husband was in the hospital. So all of us were reaching out to her all day long. How are things going? How is he doing? You know, it's just really being a family and that's, we're very, very family orientated, very family orientated and we built the right culture. But again, it's, we, we were lucky because we had the right people at the beginning that we have found and kept and made sure that we keep them happy. Okay, so let's let's talk about that for just a moment. Has does does someone's ability to fit into the culture ever change? Because I mean, here's the thing, you know, and I'm with you. You never know if somebody's going to fit until they're on your team, right? Now that being said, there's certainly red flags that can tell you this person's not going to be a good fit, so don't bring them on. But until somebody's there for a couple of weeks, it's pretty tough to tell are they really going to fit in. That said, what I've experienced is over the years there are people who will be a great culture fit for a very, very long period of time. There are people who will be for a short period of time. And there's also people that for, you know, we, we just, we, for example, we had one where this person was on our team for a, a number of years and in their, their work environment changed. We there, you know, due to COVID and all this stuff, we had to, <clears throat> we, well, we didn't have to, but in an effort to accommodate this individual, we want to make sure they could work from home and not have to come into the office. And let me just tell you, that was that was in not a good way a game changer for that person in their role at our company because they 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 fell out of culture with the team, right? All of a sudden, now that they're working from home, they're not connected in the same way with the team that they are when they're working from the office and when they're there all the time and when they're you know when they're fully participating in everything. It's different than when they're not. Have you have you noticed that? Have you have, have you experienced some of that? Have you have you seen shifts in people over time as their world changes and as they go through events in their lives? Absolutely, yeah. We've seen we've seen things like that. COVID was definitely difficult for majority of us. Our we were fortunate here because we're in the Midwest, so we weren't hit as hard as some of the outlying areas. Um, but we were able to have team meetings again as long as we were safe, wore our masks, things like that. And it, it was imperative that everybody showed up. Um, and luckily, we didn't have people that chose not to show up. They all did. But certainly, we have had great team members that have lasted eight, nine, ten months on our team. And then all of a sudden, some big life thing happens where they need to take a break. And that's perfectly fine. Um, and most of the time, they choose to go another route outside of real estate. You know, maybe they needed to get another full time job because the uh, husband became unemployed and they needed more steady income, you know, or benefits or something like that. It, it definitely that has happened. Um, we always wish them well. Uh, the seat on the bus is open for them if they choose to come back, but you pretty much know whether or not they're going to come back. You just nailed it though, too. I mean, there's, there's some, sometimes people leave with dignity and sometimes people leave poorly. 
and and those that leave with dignity i'm with you we've got we've got one right now who's got a spouse who who has uh, you know is due to you know we live in seattle and it's a moist climate and stuff and there's mold spores and stuff you know that float around the air and stuff that some people just aren't able to handle uh from a health standpoint and so this particular team member the entire you know two years they've been in seattle their spouse has been sick so they gotta move they're moving back to california we love this person love them and uh and and he you know he's leaving with dignity and if they ever come back to seattle man we're hiring them back in a heartbeat mm -hmm. and if i if there's anything i can do to help him get a, a role where he's going man i'm i'm in his corner but we've also had the opposite happen where people try and burn down the house on their way out the door and it's like man you think you're coming back and, and, and i've had people like that even come back and ask for a job back and it's like Pound Sam, brother. Like, what are you thinking? Are you, are you kidding? <laughs> so, all right. Last but not, and, and actually, we are out of time. I I, sh I, I got to say, we are we. This has been phenomenal. This has gone super fast. Uh, we didn't get to focusing on helping your team produce, but I'm going to assume that a lot of that's the accountability and the, and the regular contact that you have with them. Um, and and you guys, this what I'm hearing and what Coach Kelly is sharing today, above all is besides and besides the love for the team which you clearly have an, a genuine love for everybody on your team and that is critical if you don't love the people on your team you got to ask yourself what am i freaking doing but beyond that the word that's coming to my mind and everything that you're sharing right now is consistency i'm hearing that you're very 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 consistent in the things that you're doing and i just can't say enough how much i, I feel like that is if nothing else, that is the number one trait a business owner has to have to be successful. You've got to be consistent. Uh, and so the last question I have for you, well, go ahead if you want to share something there. Yeah, just one. I'll make that really quick. Going back to accountability and helping my team produce, there is nothing more valuable than a team leader calling your team member and asking how they can help. The team leader, not the squad leader, the team leader calling your member, your team member and asking what they can do to help. That is a very powerful thing. And it's And it's hard to do. It's, it's especially as your team grows, the bigger your team gets, the harder that is to do. And yet the more important it becomes. It's that regular contact. It's, it's consistent contact with each member of your team. It doesn't have to be long. It doesn't mean you have to do an hour long debrief with every single person on your team every week. But at the same time, you've got to care. You've got to take the time to show that you care and, and to connect with them individual. Well, Coach Kelly, I really appreciate you taking the time to be on today. Uh, and for those of you that haven't already done so, go to clubwealth.com forward slash grow your business to get Kelly's download. Uh, yeah. Do it. It'll save you a ton of time in life. <laughs> it really will. Yeah, and that's the thing. You guys look for those shortcuts. That, and when I say shortcuts, shortcuts that don't sacrifice quality or experience or anything like that. You know, we're talking about ways that you can get it, you know, kind of cut the corner, if you will, uh, without sacrificing in, in ways that will be detrimental. Uh, and you can learn, you can take advantage of what Kelly's learned and, and, the, and what, what, you know, what she's gone through the mistakes she's made and how she's learned from those mistakes. And, and this document is one way to do that. So that said, uh, also coach Kelly, tell us you are in uh, Missouri. Tell us what part of you're in yeah. Springfield, Missouri, Southwest portion of Missouri. So we uh, service Joplin quite a bit, Branson quite a bit. Uh, Springfield. Those are probably the three biggest cities close to us. So I would recommend anybody that's got a referral in that area, uh, you reach out to Coach Kelly. I know that she and her team will take great care of them. And uh, my hunch is she'll probably remember you and want to return the favor of giving the opportunity. So absolutely. Right on. Well, we've got a coach's call to get to. So uh, everybody have a great day. And uh, Coach Kelly, anything you want to add before we wrap up? Thank you for the opportunity. And anybody can reach out to me. You've got my name. You can reach out to me on uh, Facebook or whatever, but I'm always here to help. I love it. Awesome. Awesome. Sounds great. And we'll make sure your contact information is on that page as well. The clubwealth.com forward slash grow your, uh, your, oh, sorry, it's grow your business. Also Kelly's, uh, you can go to clubwealth.com forward slash Kelly Revore uh, for her coaches page. And you can read all about Kelly and her experience and, and why she's a great coach. Should you ever decide that you're ready to step up and to get some coaching? So, all right, that said, have a great day. And Ke coach Kelly, I see you on the coaches call. And more importantly, I'll see you in a week in Hawaii. In Maui. I can't wait. I'm so ready. <laughs> I know. Do. I'm stoked. I can't wait. Right on. And it sounds like we might actually get to do the helicopter. So I'm excited about that. Or so. the Super Bowl. I don't know. Yeah, well, no, both. You won't have to sacrifice either one. You'll be able to do okay. both. We'll make it happen. So. Going to make it happen. We'll make it happen. All right. Sounds good. We'll see you later. Take care, everybody. Bye, guys.